Good evening. And how are we? I hope that you are fine. Today is the first day of lockdown in the UK. Part two, should I say? Part two. Um, we are going to be locked down for what? How many? How many? How many weeks? A whole like, a month, really, when you think about it. Um, but it's good to be here. It's good to see you all. Um, obviously today is Thursday and it's all about the Denta show and I have a very special guest with me. I'm sure you can hear the fireworks in the background. Yes, it is the 5th of November. And so if you know that date, you know that today is definitely a day that you're going to be hearing a lot of fireworks. Um, a big thank you to World Remit for sponsoring our show. You can join over 5.7 million people around the world who are sending money back home to Africa, especially to Ghana. Um, and so you should join that train and make sure that you register with um, World Remit. Go on www.worldremit.com and send that money. It's fast, it's easy um, and um, great commission, like in terms of like the amount that you get for your friends and family you need to go World Remit. So make sure that you go on their website and do that. Now, if you're watching me for the first time, how come? How can this be? But thank you so much for joining me. Make sure that you subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you go on um, Odana Network um, and click, click the subscribe button. If you're watching me on The Dentist Show Facebook, make sure that you hit that like button as well. Hello, Mami Sika. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know where you're watching me from. I know people are glued on the internet with the American, you know, uh, votes, what's happening, who's going to be the next president of America. Is it Biden? Is it still Trump? You know, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, but I'm so glad that some of you are able to join me today as we discuss a very, very important topic. So just imagine this, guys. Imagine this waste, okay? Imagine the plastics that's in there and one man just goes out there, uses the plastic, right? And turns it into this. Like how? Like, like how? <laughs> and I, I know you're wondering, like, how was he able to do it? Um, and the thing is, let me tell you about Nelson Boating. Nelson Boating is a Goober past winner. Uh-huh, so it, it doesn't surprise me that he's doing all this amazing things. Um, so that's him right there working. Um, and there's another picture as well. So originally his story was that, you know, he turned um, plastics into pavements. Um, and um, obviously he still does that. And I want to just really find out how, how, how were you able to do this, um, Nelson? And he's right here with me. Um, I'm gonna go back on my 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 comments and people are like the app. Which app is easier to use for me? Which app are you talking about? Oh, the app. Yes, the World Remit app. Yes, of course you can use the app as well. Uh, Loretta is watching me from London. Someone's what? Daniel's watching me from Reading. Thank you so much. And guys, please do a watch party. Do a watch party if you're watching me on Facebook. If you're watching me on YouTube, you can share on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, all of that. Make sure that let's share our pages because do you know what? Some of these conversations that we're having, um, I feel like a lot more people need to be watching this. It's not just for you and me to, to indulge in such goodness. Um, as you know, I'm always encouraging people to move back home to Ghana. I'm always um, promoting people that are doing well on the, on the motherland. And I think that Nelson is no exception. Like he is just doing amazing things. So without further ado, drums rolling. Let's welcome Nelson. <laughs> Hi Nelson. Hi. Hey Denta. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Ghana is free. You're on lockdown, right? <laughs> ah, Charlie, London is on lockdown today. Like from midnight actually. From midnight, that's it. Stuck at wow. home. You're not supposed to go out. Um, so, yeah. But I think we're kind of used to it at the moment. With You know, the world has changed. This 2020 has really changed a lot of things. Um, but Nelson, I want to start with, you know, your journey. Um, I know that a few years ago, Gooba 
um, you know, rewarded you for the good work that you were doing, you know, your Goober past winner. Um, how has the journey been since, you know, I even came to your, um, your place um, to do an interview with you, um, you know, I saw how you were making the, the plastics um, and making it into pavements. You know, how has the journey been for you so far? Uh, the journey has been very, very tough. Uh, it, 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 it's not an easy one. Like, you, you, you can imagine how Ghana we treat people going green business. Mm -hmm. Even banks don't want to look at you. They want you to start somewhere before they even come to your aid to even assist you with some uh, loans for you to expand. So the journey has been really, really difficult. Yeah, really, really yeah. difficult. So what made you start plastic business? Because your 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 company. Tell us about your company and why you decided to do recycling of plastics. Okay, so I I started plastic recycling at the age of thirteen with a company that is in Ghana and um, in Tema in. Industry, which I'm not going to mention the name of the yeah, company of because by then I was very, very young, 13 years boy. But I'm, I'm, I need to work to get myself to school and other things. So, um, my first day at work, it, it was night. Fortunately for me, I was posted to the recycling department. Mm -hmm. So, that is where I learned how to work with plastic waste, how to build a student's fixed machine when they broke down. That is where I started learning all these things from. Then somewhere okay. in 2012, uh, my company, it's a family company, so they said they, they decided to sell it off. But they came up with um, a commission of 5% to anybody who will be able to uh, sell the company. Fortunately for me, God being on my side, I was, I was the one who was able to do the selling. So I got my 5% and set up my own plastic recycling business. Okay, so at the age of 13, working um that young how how was that in itself um uh, my grandma used to tell us that you need to work for yourself you need to work for yourself when i was even 10 years old i'm working in the block factory near our house to get some money to go to school i'm used to work i i, I didn't feel anything because i went there with my uncle by then he was very lazy he ran away because he's a our first day at, at work is night shift. But I told myself, I have nowhere to go. I need to work. If I don't work, I'll get a problem. I'll have a serious problem with my education. So I need to work. So I work. So you so were working Chinese... to, support, to support your education? Yes, that is what I was doing. OK. The and Chinese... where were your parents at the time? Come again. Where were your parents? My parents were around. My, we have, uh, I, I have six siblings. And my father cannot do all. I need to help the family also. I, I, I need to help them. And the Chinese guys I met at the factory, they really like me because they, they don't understand why a young guy like me is working. So I'll, they would just call me. I would tell them my story. So they said, no, why? No problem. When you go to work, even if it's one hour you work with us, we are going to pay you. So that gave me the big opportunity. While I was going to school, I was still working, getting some money to pay fees and support my parents. Wow. Wow. And were you make so you were making enough to be able to support yourself and your family? Yes, I was doing or oh, I was getting enough money. The Chinese even add some money to me because they, they, they are very, very surprised that at my age I I I'll be I can work like this, also pay my fees. So they were very, very impressed. So they, they used to give me extra money, even wow. though I never worked for it. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I just wanna like just talk about the fact that at that age, you probably had um, an entrepreneur spirit um, at that age. And how do you feel about how people or nowadays would complain a lot? I mean, at the age of 13, um, and for you to be courageous enough to go out there and work, do you think that nowadays we are afraid of work? Do you think we have the same passion, the same vibe as when you first started? I think the vibe has gone down, has gone down because uh, most of the young guys now, we are thinking of how to make quick money, internet, quick money. We, we don't love to work very hard for ourselves, which will build us, but we rather think of how to get the money in a quicker way, which is very bad. Yeah. 
So now I've seen that that um, in, in, in the youth or the young guys now, it has really, really gone down. Everybody's looking for a way to get the money very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and not working, and not, and not working hard enough to kind of get the money. And not sweating. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. don't want to sweat. Yeah. So when you got that five percent, you were like, "Bingo, <laughs> <laughs> bingo! I made some money." So you then set up your own company. So tell us about that process. Okay. So. Uh, that evening, I was very, very like I have not seen such money in my life before. So how much, big. Nelson? Can you say how much it was at that time? Uh, that time it was around four hundred thousand dollars. Hey! <laughs> so, go. Uh, I decided no, I'm not going to use even a penny to buy phone or car. Nothing. <laughs> I'm going to set up a factory okay. so that I can. I can come or I can bring those that lost their job with me. Wow. That we, we can start something again. So I use everything to buy the land, to set up the structures, the machines, even unfortunately, uh, uh, fortunately for me, that the Chinese will gave me two sets of machines and I also import some from China to start wow. the business. Wow, wow, wow. So, and how was it like recruiting people for the business? Okay, plastic recycling is not doesn't really need so much. Uh, like you, you don't need high qualification to to okay. uh, operate the machine. Mm -hmm. What we do, we, we take ordinary guys, mm -hmm. we train them for a week or two, then they get used to the machine. Then off we go. It doesn't really need um, high qualification to operate those machines. Okay, so. In the factory, what were you doing? So you were turning the plastics into pavement. Is that what you first started off doing? No. Um, we first started as recycling the pure tassachi into pellets. Then those pellets would be sold to uh, other companies to produce the poly, that, those black poly bags, white poly bags, and the one we used to put cocoa and all, all that porridge in it. So... Uh, I realized that no, I'm I'm not making much profit by selling only the pellets. Why don't I turn them into polybag myself? So 2014, I started producing the polybag myself and not selling the pellet to any company anymore. But 2015, 2016, that's where when the flood the flood came around cycle, the government was putting so much threat to ban the plastic, uh, plastic bag manufacturing industries. And because I have over 64 workers directly and indirectly the over 300, how will how will I let these people go without any job? If wow. if if this ban really will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And second, if I hear the, the there's flood here, there is this plastic is causing this problem, I feel very, very bad because I know I'm a big contributor to this problem. What will yeah. I do? What will I do to keep the business uh, going? What will I do so that I, I, I wouldn't have that feeling that I'm causing a lot of problems in, in our cities? That is when I decided to plan on how to turn the plastic waste that we have into paving blocks and Lego bricks. So this product doesn't go out there to, to pollute again, but rather keep our environment clean from plastic waste. Okay. So what made you come out of the idea? Like, how, how did it come about? OK, so uh, our, 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 our first trial, we were having some plastic board that we used to cut the handle of the poly bag on. Mm -hmm. I brought it from my old company 15 years ago. I packed engines on, engine, uh, sport engine on it. But, um, but it's still the same. There's no breakage, nothing. So I said, ah, if this thing can be used for paving blocks, wouldn't that be perfect? Mm. So I, I I went online, saw some India guys, they were burning in a drum. I also tried to do the burning. By then, anytime I burn these plastics and mix them with the sun, there is a there is a smoke around the area, the area people will be talking, and the product that comes out is not really strong and very smelly because when you burn the plastic for long, 
the bonding property in it uh, goes down and the bricks can break easily. Okay. So I ask myself, what will I do to, con to control the temperature so that it doesn't burn rather, but rather melt? Okay. Because I have experience in building a studer for my masters, mm -hmm. I built my first studer, which can uh, turn the plastic and the sand into paste-like foam without emitting any smoke, nothing. It just melts and comes out as a paste. So you actually, wait, wait, wait. So you actually went to uni to study this and you did, what did you study at uni? Come again with the question. What, what did you study at university? You said that you okay. did, yeah, your master's. Okay. I did uh, computer engineering, network okay. engineering, to be precise. That's what I did at NIT. Okay. So in, in the factory, I was the supervisor. First, I was the foreman. They promoted me to supervisor. And then when the new director came, he was finding it very difficult to uh, put up the production papers and other things. So I designed a template and gave it to him. He was okay. surprised. Ah, somebody in the factory, how can you design a template that will make my work very easily? Mm. Then they have to move me from the factory to become special assistant to the director. So wow. that is where I... I learned my administration work and other stuff. Wow. So when did you first lay, like get your first job with the pavements? Okay, so my first job, it was uh, a little bit sad. Why? Because the contract oh. was bigger than me. The contract was bigger than me. Oh. So they had to cancel it. Even though I did half of it, they had to cancel it. But it, it was something for me to learn a lot. Mm. So when I lost that job, I built an extra extruder to make it two, so that I can handle other others that oh, comes in, so that I don't lose them anymore. Okay, so when you first, so when you got the contract, you knew in your heart that you wouldn't be able to deliver, but you thought, yes. let me just, <laughs> let me get my <laughs> first contract. <laughs> yes, yes, I knew, I knew for sure I can't do this. It's too big, one million bricks, it will be it's very very it, it, it's very impossible for me to get that done wow. within three months but i told myself no let me take it let me take this challenge upon myself and do it let me take wow. it and so then you, I was able to have, you were able, able to have five hundred thousand. Yes. yes and the rest they said no 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 my guy we, we, we can't wait for you mm -hmm. but it's a very good thing for me why now when you go there my my bricks have been laid half on the compound and the concrete one. The concrete one is fading off and uh, also wearing off. What's my is there? So maybe to keep them some, mm -hmm. some tomorrow. So I was very happy that happened. So so how long does the plastic pavements last compared to a concrete one or whatever? Okay, so plastic is made plastic takes 200 years to start degrading. And the product we have is made up of plastic and sand. So you can so just you, you can just imagine how long it will take for it to start degrading. Wow. So so but then why so why are people using the plastics? Why are they making why are they using the other one? We have a lot of others that we need to fulfill. We have a lot of others that we need to fulfill. The the people have really shown interest in the product because of the price wise and the yeah. quality. And the durability it is has, it more expensive or is it less than the normal pavements? It's less than the less, it's less than the normal paving brick that we have. It's okay. less, about 30, 25 to 30 percent. Okay, so how much is it? How much is it? How much is it? A square meter is 35 Ghana cities, while the concrete one is, is sold for the least you can get is 55 Ghana cities per square meter. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. So tell me about this house. Tell me about this house. When you posted it in our group, I was like, he, Nelson, can I post it? Nelson was like, Denta, calm, calm, calm down, calm down. Calm down, you post it, calm down. Please tell me about this house, how you were able, I mean, okay, you you tell your story, please. Tell me how you did okay. it. Okay, all right. So uh, we all know how plastic is a big problem in our city. It's yeah. a crap. A crowd to be precise. Uh, I can also see that there are schools under trees 
uh, people cannot afford these dollar houses. What will I do? What will I do? I always think of what, what will I do to solve that problem? Why don't I use the problem in the city to solve the problem in our village? Wow. And also solve the problem of housing in Ghana. So I I first built um, a house in my house, just small one for the dogs, where I, I, I can learn my mistakes and other things. So all the, it's the same machine that I, I need to use, but a different mode. Okay. So I sat down. We have the concrete version of that. Look at how the mode is. Build it myself by using the plastic to uh, to these uh, bricks. So these bricks that you see there, we lay them without cement. Mm -hmm. Even though you, you can see where, uh, a little cement at the top, it's because of a mistake. We use the cement to correct the straightness. We oh. put them with, without, we, did, we didn't invite any mason, nobody. I built this this house with my workers, students that pass around the area. I'll call them, come, let's do, let, let us arrange these bricks. So while they are talking, I'll, I'll, I'll be hearing the comments. People will be saying, ah, why don't you do it like this, like this? Then I'll be taking all those advice. Okay. And now we've come up with a better, better mode. My next building that you see, you will not see this iron roofing sheet. We are going to use plastic. So the roofing sheet wouldn't be. Uh, iron sheet that is more. Yes, the most has been done. Maybe we want to start it by January. Then we will start producing those roofing sheets. So my next building, you you will not see this uh, roofing sheet on it. Okay, so this building, how much did it cost? Like, how much is a building like this costing you, um, with the products that you're using? Fifty thousand Ghana cities. Eh? Fifty thousand Ghana cities. That's like, wait, 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 wait. 50,000 Ghana. How much is that in dollars? No, let me calculate because you might be building my house less right now. 10, less than $10,000. Eh? Less than $10,000. Less than $10,000. <laughs> this, uh, this, this, this house you see there is made up of 13,400 kilos of plastic weight. 13,400 10, kilos of plastic weight. 400 kilos of plastic weight. And see, like, oh my god, so <laughs> Nelson, no, okay. So, first of all, what made you build the house? Did somebody contract you to build the house, or you were just trying to build that? Like, what were you doing? Okay, so, uh, I want I wanted to separate the polybag business from the brick business, yeah, because normally when people come to me, I take them to the same office, they will see their polybag, you talk. So, I wanted to build that side for. And use it as my echo office. That's our showroom. When you come there, you can see everything for the chairs that we build, the roofing sheet, the paving tile. So that is the main reason why I set up that big uh, house over there. So you are solving a major problem in Ghana. Yes. One housing, two, <laughs> the plastic issue. So you're solving two problems for us. So you could actually be no. doing affordable housing for people that are on the streets. You could be doing affordable housing for people that can't afford this $100,000 and $50,000. You could be doing this. Yes. That is our main goal. So so, so, are you getting support from the ministries? Like, what has happened? Has any of the government bodies supported you? Uh, Professor Frimbon Boatin has been a very good man in my life uh i would say he he really encourages me to do things by myself do you know uh first i wanted to Im import or contract some people in russia to build a machine for me but he told me that nelson would it yeah we need to try now i'm able to build my machines and the guy that i was supposed to be in contract is telling me to send one of my lego bricks to him at russia i told him no unless i, I finish my house what? So if this if this man could have given me Nelson, take this money, go and buy a machine, I wouldn't have learned a lot. It's true. Now I've I've built my I've I've built my home. Now I can build machine and sell them. At the same time, build houses and sell them. So the the professor Prepor Boatin has been a very good person in my life. Very, very good person in my life. Not only money, but what if somebody pushes you to do something? Mm. It's, it, 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 I can say it's more than him 
giving me money. Because yeah. if I could have, if, if I would have taken that money from him by force, buy the machine, I, I would have been lazy. Now I, I build my own machines. Oh my God. Yeah, so you're now building the, the machine. So in terms of how do you see the continent in terms of how we support our own you know you know you even spoke about you know when you first started it was a china china company that was doing x y z x y z and you know you were you were working for them how do you see africa in terms of the talent that we have if it's nurtured if it's supported the type of things that you are coming out with you no know, i'm sure a lot other of other people will be coming out with similar innovations how are we supporting our own <laughs> it's a very tough question the support is very very poor the support that we uh our, our africans are giving to their own is very very poor even when you start when, when i when i was starting this i needed some little help from the bank to uh what do you call it set up the factory and separate it from the poly bag they are telling me no i need to get somewhere first grant very difficult to get even the stress that they will take you through for you to get it it might even discourage you to stop what you're doing but for me i always say i have the spirit of keep on going for me that is my spirit not i'm boasting that is me i will not stop until i finish it that is me so the support here in africa ghana is very difficult you are on your own you are on your own even doing it then they might even pull you down mm, mm, yes. mm, 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 mm. How, did you did you get a lot of resistance from people? A Say, lot. Ah, plastics. Why? What plastics are saying? Like why plastics? A lot. People, if, if people were even telling me, this. some of the people were telling me, "Is this guy normal?" <laughs> but now, but but now, now I, I'm telling you, they they come, they always come around, take pictures, selfies on 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 the building. Where, so where's the building situated? Where's the building situated? Just behind the factory. Just, just behind, the behind the factory. Yeah, yeah. Just behind the factory. So is it your own home or are you gonna sell in it? Are you gonna be selling it? What what are you gonna be doing with it? I have other land around, also very close to the factory. This will be my echo office. Then I'll build the other one. Because this house, I have learned also some little mistakes about it, which I'm going to correct in my next building. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I can see that there's people here saying, Denta, we want his details. I want a six bedroom plastic mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. So um, that is uh, um, Nelson's details right here, guys. If you have any questions for him, this is your time. I know there's a, now there's a lot of people, guys, share your page all because this news, everybody needs to hear this news. Share your pages um you know like the 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 youtube like the 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 facebook and let's keep the conversation going if you want to contact nelson boating that's his website that's his email and that's his number okay right chrissy are there questions that we can um spring up on the screen so that um people can you know ask him questions Pes perseverance is his middle name yes definitely he didn't stop he's not quitting for anybody um you know no matter what um nelson went through the challenges he was like no i'm not stopping people can talk people could call me plastic man people can call me waste man whatever it is that you want to call me i'm still going to do what i am doing so how many people have you employed so far currently we have 64 we used to have 74 but because of the covid and we, so okay. we, we, we we've less our team. But when things get them, I'm going to call at them. So it will be seven. But currently, they are 64. And here, really, there are about 300. Those are about 90% women. They go out there to pick the plastic and sell to us at the day by kilo. Then the least person is getting about 50 Ghana cities per day. That's the least wow. person. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if I go and collect plastics, I can bring it to you and sell it to you? Yes. And uh, in future, we want we want to do this. Maybe someone can just collect plastic. We will tell you, okay, give us let's say twenty thousand kilos of plastic, and we 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 also give you a house in an estate to a house. So yeah, oh. so that's that's a future plan that we we have. Wow. 
Okay, that's that's I like that. I like that initiative. Okay, yeah. so that's a question from David. Is it heat resistant in case of a fire outbreak? Um, how well will it stand? That's a very good question. Okay, so um, the product is not made up of 100% plastic. You know, sand serves as a retardant to fire. So there are 70% sand, 30% plastics in these bricks that we have. And with the, with the heat, there is a groove in between the bricks that the heat from outside doesn't come to the room. The coldness in the room also doesn't go out. And it's being stuffed with fiber. So the room, the outside will be very hot when when, 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 the, when the sun shines, but the inside will be very, very cold. I wish one day you guys can be in hot afternoon. Then you can feel how cold the inside is. Wow. So if there's a fire outbreak, okay, it will it will still stand. It won't it won't it won't melt like plastic. The way the way uh, our concrete bricks behave, the same mm -hmm. thing this will behave. Okay. That is why, like I said, it's seventy percent sand, thirty percent plastics. Okay. And the sand is a far resistant product. Okay. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Are there any other questions? And um, somebody says, "Amazing, inspiring, the way he's working to solve problems." Um. So, have you got any contracts at the moment? I mean, looking at this, have you since? You put this out there. What has the response been like? Okay, so uh, we were even selling it before putting out this structure. If you don't want to use it as, as your whole building, you can just use, it, use the bricks as a foundation block in a waterlogged or salty area. So mm -hmm. they made it darkness and cut to your wall. So if you don't want to use it as um, the whole building, it can just be used as a Foundation bricks, and we've we've sold thousands of them to climb before even putting up this structure. Because we know when the orders start coming in, maybe you might find out, you might find ourselves wanting. So we started selling it as a foundation bricks okay. for people that want to build in the water log or salty areas. Okay, that's that's great. That's great. Romeo says these are the reasons why I want to come back to home to become a to become a hard money investor in people that with innovation towards sustainable um you know i think i think you're absolutely right romeo and you know stories like nelson really just resonates with me and just encourages you that actually look there's an opportunity for us to be doing things and being innovative at home in our country that actually we don't need any other people because we have the resources we have everything in Africa to be able to make it. Do you not agree, Nelson? Don't we have everything in Africa? We have we have everything. We have everything that we can be on our own. When 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 we talk about Ghana beyond age, this is one of them. Mm. We have a problem. Why don't we use that problem to solve another problem? This is it. And this is what the people must support. Yes, absolutely. Um, someone says, Whoa, in future, this plastic house will take ac from the system is that is that so because it's it's cool in the house it's cold and 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 the the air conditioning thermostat will not be working continuously for you to pay more bills more electricity bill because it will take time for the corners in the room to get low for you to restart wow yeah wow. Yeah. somebody says how do you sort out the plastic Okay, so our technology, we 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 really doesn't really doesn't matter what kind of plastic we use. All kinds of plastic except PVC pipe. We don't need to sort them out. Our machine can take care of everything. Our machine is built with three different heating zones, and the plastic they all have their melting points. So, as one travels from the first heating zone to the third one, definitely there will be uh, the 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 plastic will melt and come and it will just come out as a paste. So we really sort, our, our machine can take up all kinds of plastic. The the exception of PVC yeah. Everything. Yes. Oh, man. So when somebody brings you, when somebody brings you a bag of, of plastics, right? The water sachets that we drink and throw away, what happens? What, what, machine, what does the machine do first, second, third? What, what happens to that process? 
Okay, so when we receive the plastics, we crush and wash if necessary. Some of the plastics, they, they, they contain food stuff and other things. Mm. So we, we need to wash them. But if it's just sand, we don't need to wash them. So this plastic will be crushed and washed, dried, mixed with sand at a proportion of 70% sand, 30% plastics. Then the mixture will be fed into the extruder with three heating zones. The mixture will then travel through all the heating zones and comes out as a paste. Then the paste will be put in the mold with a cooling system around it, then pressed under hydraulic press. Then between 30 seconds to one minute, the product will be ejected dried. Okay, wow. So, and, and, and the process takes what? Does it take a day, two days, three days, four days? How long does it take? It's just 30 seconds to one uh, minute. You have your bridge that you can start laying. Wow. So how many Unlike bridge? The uh -huh. Unlike the concrete one, you need to dry them for days. This one, as soon as you eject it, you can start laying them. Wow. And how many bricks are you producing um, in a day? Currently, with the paving stone, we are doing between 1,000 to 1,500 per day. And the Lego bricks, that's the one used, we used in building, we are doing between 300 to 600 in a day. In a day. And how long did it take you to build the house? Uh, to build the house, I, I, was, I was supposed to use two to three, uh, three weeks to finish the house, if only the bricks are ready and are on site. So I uh, three, four months, because we, we, we only come there to bed on Saturdays with my workers. I, I, I just bring them on Saturday that we, we do some work and go back. So it's not something we continue building it. When we are free, we, 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 we just go to the site, arrange some few blocks. So that's what we are doing. So it, it, it took us about three months to finish that building. Only three months? Yeah. Ah. But people are taking like... <laughs> Even it's small. Even it's small. We were, because we, we, we were still supplying people that have their orders with us. And, and still building this one. That's why, like, like I'm saying, if we have all the bricks on site, we are supposed to take two to three weeks to finish that house. Wow. Okay. Right. There's a question. We, um, it will allow the country to have surplus power if more of Nelson's buildings are built at scale. Doomsos will be a thing of the past. Nelson, have you thought of using your plastic and sand combination to create a sheet rock for even houses made with bricks? Um, it can be a great insulation. Ooh, have you thought of that? Yeah, we, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of things that we can do with the plastics. Wow. By then, uh, but this, this is how we go. We we want every year we'll come up with a new. But like you, you visited my factory last year. We yes. were just doing the paving block. Yeah. Now, this year, I'm doing Lego bricks for house. Next mm. year, I'm moving to roof tile. I will not use that iron sheet that you saw there. And yeah. even the wood, we are, we, are, we are going to move from. That is what we are going to do next year. So the house will become more cheaper than even the price I'm talking about now. Charlie, but we can be doing this across Africa, or not just Ghana. This is great innovation. Okay, yeah. somebody says, is it paintable oh can you paint it yes uh if you don't want the brick uh design around it you can just use a filler we, we have a special filler that we mix okay that you, you can use it to uh to paint okay to fill the gaps and then do your painting so nobody can see it's uh, what plastic brick that you've been reading but for we we prefer to leave it like this for people to believe because if if i would have shown this by finishing everything people will not believe me so mm. i will leave it like this just do the in interior then yeah. the outside will be there when you come just look at it that you then you believe that it's plastics so okay. it's very printable you can paint it okay david says secondly no can you go secondly please i haven't finished the question secondly with plastic and its health related issues in terms of its chemical emission 
Um, how well can one trust the safety in using these plastic blocks? Thank you. Thank you, David. That's a good question. Okay. okay. So uh, the plastic will start emitting gases at a temperature, let's say before from 100 degrees Celsius. And Ghana, we, 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 we've not even record 50 degrees Celsius. I don't know if I'm right. We've not even record 50 degrees Celsius before. Like our cars that we are sitting on, we, we, all, we, all, have, we all have been uh, putting ourselves into some health issues. So the plastic will not emit any gas until 100 degrees Celsius before some of the plastic, if not all, some of them. So if there's a fire in the house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If there's a fire in the house. Um, I hope that's answered your question, David. Um, ML says, what is the estimated lifetime of such a house? 200 years. Simple. 200 years. Because the, even the, 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 the toys are mom bought for us. If we are able to keep them, it will still be there until now. Yeah. Plastic start degrading from 200 years. Then the plastic will start degrading. So is the product. Because the product is just made up of plastic and stuff. That is it. Okay. Um, what if any part of the building catches fire? I think she's um, talking about the chemical emission, I think. So if it, if it does catch fire and it's over 100 degrees, then um, that's when the chemicals will start coming out, right? It's not, it's not actually chemical. That, that is why we, in our mixture, we don't include PVC pipe. Okay. That, that type of plastic is very, very poisonous. In our mixture, we don't include PVC pipe. HDP, LDP, PP, PET, that is what we use, that, that type of plastic that we use. So in our mixture, it's only PVC pipe that we don't use, which is more poisonous than any other plastic that we know. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the strength of the material, i.e. NMM square after curving? Has any uh, regulation body got involved to approve this? Okay, so we, we've, we, We've taken samples of our bricks to Ghana Ware Authority and Ghana Standard Board for strength, and we were we were getting between thirty-five to forty. Okay, so it's okay. Yes, the normal concrete bricks is between fifteen to twenty. We are getting thirty-five to forty. Okay, perfect, perfect. And has it been approved? Is it been has it been approved? Ghana Standard Authority. We are on the process. Even though we we've done some tests with them. We've done some tests and it was successful. We need a certificate from, from that. That is what we are maybe by end of this month, they'll be done with it and issue us our certificate. Okay. So once you get that, so it's like, a, that, that's like a, having an FDA approval kind of thing, right? Yes. Then we've done, yeah, okay. we've done other tests with them, but they need to check the, uh, how uh, re resistant is it to water, salt, which we know it will pass it because we have plastic in the sea over years. It's still there. Yeah. If, if if plastic is in the sea that has a lot of salt, it's still self surviving. How much more in our dry lands? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. So you're getting all the approvals. You have some already, but you're waiting for the last few ones, which will be delivered yes. at the end of this month. And that month. Yes. is delivered, we're good to go. We can now start building houses for people in the diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> ah, have have they considered uh climatic conditions in ghana hot temperature oh yeah already said that um kp you must have missed that um yes um he has considered that he said anything above 100 um degrees um is is dangerous but apart from that it it is pretty much good to go right nelson yeah. yes okay um somebody says tears of god says it's not just about the bpa it's more about the high inflammability of plastics and it's uh hydrocarbon any yes like yeah like i said the plastic will start reacting when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. some and even our, our product is not made up of 100 percent plastic it's with sand the sun so there's 70% of sand and 30% of plastic. 
plastics in it. So it's not made up of 100% uh, plastic that you said uh, to start reacting with a, a little heat or something else, yeah. Okay, all right. So so what, what is the dream, um, Nelson? What is, what is your, in the next five years, where do you wanna see your company and, and, and what's the vision like? Okay, so now our collectors are, are able to collect 20,000 kilos of plastic waste in a day, and we can do only 3,000. Our dream is to do all the 20,000 they bring to us and even add more. Our dream is to see trees under, uh, schools under trees being removed and built with our plastic bricks. Absolutely. Our dream is to see the poor be able to afford a house. That is what we want to achieve. Absolutely. And I think, do you know what? This is something that the Goober Foundation, we would love for you to build a, how, um, a, a school, you know, a, like, a, like you said, a school that's under the tree. We would love to fund for you to build one, um, you know, for, 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 the, for the kids that are actually getting education under the trees, which needs to be stopped. At this price, I think we'll be able to raise money for you to be able to do that. Um, and, you know, thank God for the, the vision that you have and the, and the strength and, the, and the, you know, just the perseverance that you're not giving up. Yeah. I know that you, you've been through a lot. You've been through so much and, you know, you've been crying out for investors for a long time. But I think that, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? Yes. It everything happens you, for a reason. Okay. Can the blocks be used to build story buildings? And if so, what's the maximum or high or how high floors can it hold? That's another good question. David, you have very good questions all. It can hold about two. We have two, we have two types of pillar boats. One for a single uh, story, and then we have a bigger one that has to carry two stories. So we have up to two stories. That's what we have. Up to sto two stories. Okay. Okay. Um, this will help the environment in Ghana and clean up the plastic in Ghana. Absolutely. Absolutely, it will. Um, you have my support too, Nelson. There's a lot of people supporting you out there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What's the con um, construction cost ranges from sand concrete uh, structures? I think you mentioned it earlier, but they must have. Uh, in between 25 to 30% compared to the complete bridge. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, your volume has changed um, a little bit. Um, I'm not sure why. But, but uh -huh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's see what this was, David. Of course, we're currently building series structures. Um, Plastics. Absolutely. Tears of God, we agree with you. Oh, you've got the green light from David. You've answered all his questions with satisfaction. And he's, you, you know, definitely, definitely on your side for this. And I think that, you know, the people that are watching, guys, if you have any other questions, please do let me know so I can ask Nelson. I think that this is a great initiative. This is a great innovation. Um, and um, Nelson, how long did it take you to build the machines? It takes me about a month to build one set. It's, it comprises of four components. We have the cooling system, the extruder, the, the hydraulic press, and the mold. It takes me about a month to build one set. A month to build one set. Yeah. And you know, so the machines, how much would it have cost you if you were to buy it from outside? The first time Professor Frimbon Boatin asked me to check, we we're looking at $100,000 for the set. Very expensive. <laughs> wow. And now they're asking you to do some for them to. to, to... Yeah, the, the guy is actually asking me to send one of my bricks, the, the Lego bricks, to him. I told him until I finish my house, I can't do that. <laughs> because you know, when when he starts building that one, the guy will say, ah, maybe this is good for me. But I actually always sit down, think about problems, how to solve it. 
that is what made me happy. If ever I see this problem, I barely I was able to solve this. So that has been my life all the while. Wow. Um, Loretta says, is Nelson's website live? I just tried, it's not working. Let yeah, that's right. It, it's working. Maybe she needs to try again. Yeah, it's working because I'm on the website right now. Let me type okay. it in again. Um, this is what I've just typed in. So you can have a look. And are you currently looking for investors? Yes, we want to expand our business. You know, we have others that can support you with their money. They're not, they are, they are not technical guys. So we are very open to investors to come in to expand this business. And even with, with the government, we are also open. Our, our, our main aim is to take these schools under trees. Why, why, why should you have plastic that's giving a problem a city? That we can't use it to solve another problem. So we are very open to any government private partnership so we can take these problems away. Absolutely. It's very possible. It's very possible. It is, yeah. it is extremely possible. I think when I'm when I come back, I mean I was supposed to see the the house um before I left, but it, the time just it wouldn't allow. But I'm yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna come and see it when I come back. And I think I'm definitely going to speak to the Minister of Education to see if there's any leeway at all um, for you to be able to be doing that. Um, I think, you know, what you're doing is, is is great. And you know I've been on your side trying to promote as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, but we will yeah. get there. We will, Slowly and surely, we'll get there. We'll get we will there. surely get there. We will surely get there. Absolutely. So are there any plans of mass constructions of houses? Yes, he definitely wants to do that, right, Nelson? Yes, that's what I want to do. Uh, someone was asking me, Maybe the real estate will not buy into my ideas. I, I already thought of that. That is why I'm not going to sell to them to build. I'm going to build my own greenhouse. Mm -hmm. this, is my, this, this is the greenhouse. We are going to use our own paving blocks to develop the, the estate. We are going to use our own roofing tiles. So we don't have a problem or we don't have uh, the issue of somebody accepting our product. But I know definitely people will start chasing it because damp, dampness in Ghana and building cracking is a is a is a long long issue that until now people are not people are unable to solve but these bricks will solve that problem for you because there's no way uh, the salt or water can rise through plastic there is no way Absolutely. people do use the mat but we don't know the direction or flow of the water but these bricks are there whether it's flowing from beneath left right side it cannot have effect on the plastic bricks That's yeah massive. brilliant what would an estimated cost um, to build a three-bedroom house? Around seventy-five to eighty thousand. You can do that. Yes, Ghana cities. So that's about maybe about twenty thousand dollars or less, fifteen thousand dollars, something like that. Yeah, fifteen yes. to twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Yes, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Um, how do you get the collection? I have over 300 plastic waste pickets, and 90% 90, 90 of them are women. They go out there, pick the plastic in the morning. When the sun's setting, they go back home, go again around three when the sun is down. Around six, they will be at my gate in a queue. Then I'll be scaling them, paying them according to the weight they were able to collect in a day. So I have a lot of plastic waste So you're, you're employing a lot of people. You're helping a lot of and people. Sometimes I even want to, I even have to tell them to wait because I don't have enough space to keep Wait. the plastic. Oh my god! My, you know, I I always say my problem is I don't want this person to get out of these people because because I have low capacity. When they come, I tell them take it back or wait for me for weeks. Wow, that is my problem. The people have the passion because it's very good. You will be in the house. You don't have money to put food on the table. You can just collect plastic and get money. But the problem is the capacity. That's the problem. Capacity. The capacity. Yeah. The capacity. Okay. Um, we're both well, thank you. Um, what What is one disadvantage of his technology and how are you working to solve it? 
Okay, so uh, for now, I can't figure out any disadvantage. That is so huge. What I can say, you can. Uh, it will be very difficult for you to build. Uh, uh, you know, people like to do. Uh, I don't know how to call it. A curve house. I was supposed to be rectangle or square-like form. This hidden roof, yes. But to build something like a curve-like building, mm. that one is to be very difficult for us, yes. Okay. So if you, if you look at this building, it's rectangle shape or yeah. square-like shape. Yeah. That's down. the only thing. Yeah. Okay. We we can do curves, curves like these curves around the building. Okay. Without the building rectangular shape or square-like shape. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Um, you also talked about affordability. What will your target market be? Low, medium, or high income earners? Low, because we have a lot of poor people than the rich in the country. And I think that is the best way to go. It, it will be very difficult for a poor man to afford $20,000 house. So going for the low, I think is the best. Absolutely. Because even yeah. the people that work in, in the banks um, can afford this, you know, because, uh, yes. the normal kind of bank workers or people work in a salon or whatever will be able to afford something afford like it. this. Yes. Um, so I think it's a, it's a, good, it's a good thing. Um, where in Ghana is the prototype? It's in, um, yeah, Ashamai, right? Ashama Katamansu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nelson, I share your vision and I can see where you are going. And I have ideas of other avenues that you can utilize your materials for. Thank you, Romeo. Please welcome. Welcome. make sure that you email him, you call him, um, and you know, share the ideas with him. Let's build each other up. Um, it's about time that we support each other. It's about time that we do more partnerships as well. So let's make sure that we share those ideas with him. Um, I just came in, so I missed all of this post. Is this plastic bottles too? Do you use plastic bottles too, or is it just a sachet? We use all kinds of plastic waste, with the exception of PVC pipes. Okay. We use all kinds of plastic waste. Wow. Wow, wow. I hope that, Karen, I hope that's answered your question. So he can use all plastics apart from PVC. And as you can see, he's built a house with the plastics that he has used. And the house is built with 30% of plastics and 70% of sand. And, it, you know, with the house like that, it's cool inside. Um, you know, it, somebody asks a question about, you know, if it gets really, really hot. Um, and when it's, if the house is burning, it's over 100 degrees, then there's an issue. But, you know, apart from that, it's, it acts normal as, you know, a normal house that's built um, with concrete. Um, what else? Do, 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 do. I am in Dallas, te Texas. Do you have a sample house I can send someone to see? Yes, the sample house is in Ashamai. So um, if you go on the details, you can email him, you can call him and he will be able to arrange for you to go and see the prototype that he has built um, and see whether you like it and get him to build for you. Absolutely. Um, uh, right, I think that is all the questions that we have. It's been such a wonderful conversation. I've been inspired again. Every time I see you, I, I, I get inspired. Um, I was inspired when I saw the, 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 the beautiful house. I get emotional about these things. I was like, hey, I need to post. Um, but I think that you have done so well. You deserve, you. you deserve to have, you know, the biggest contract in Ghana right now to build schools, to build um, roads, to build, you know, everything, pavements. We don't have enough pavements in Ghana. Um, yeah. All of these contracts could be awarded to you um, and you can employ all of those amazing 300 people and even more, um, even more. Yeah. apply you with plastics that we are trying to get rid of in the country. And so, you know, God bless you. I pray that Thank you will you. get the investment that you need from this show. I know that you will get the investment that you need. I know yeah. that it's coming. Um, For sure. 
So ML, ML says, what investment vehicle are in place to help collect um, the fund for investors? So if somebody comes to invest, what investment vehicle are in place to help collect the fund for investors? So if somebody comes and invest, how do they get their um, return on investment? So with that, when I I, I believe I, I have my financial guide that takes off those things. For me, I'm, I'm a technical person, but there is much profit in this business. There's much profit. As, as uh, we have all this plastic, the materials are just around us. We don't need to import anything. Mm -hmm. But I have my financial guys in place that can speak to that. I think you have a you have a proposal done already. I've got one of you have yes. a proposal for investors yes. that are yes. looking to invest. Yes. So it has everything. You can go through that. You know, there'll be lawyers obviously involved, you know, so that we make sure that everything is intact. But okay. it's a great innovation to invest in. And so if anybody's out there that's watching this show, um, please, please, please make sure that you email you go on the website and um, let me put the website details and the number up again. Um, it's been a great conversation. If anybody hasn't got any other questions, then I think that we are going to wrap up. What are your last words, um, Nelson, to encourage, you know, somebody that's actually thinking of setting up a business, um, but, you know, is thinking, mm, should I do it? Should I not? You know, what are your words of encouragement to them? The few things that, uh, that I can say is it's very difficult for we manufacturers in Ghana, but uh, we should also think of how would the ordinary Ghanaian get a job to do? We need to do it. It's very difficult. I'm not saying it's uh, a very fancy thing. It's very difficult. Sometimes you feel like giving up, but when you hear uh, the words from these poor women that, oh, because of you, my daughter can go to school, my son can go to, I can put food on the table. It, it encourages you and God bless you with that. It's very difficult, but I say that is the best way to go. Easy money won't take you anywhere. It will end up in the middle of the road. But when you suffer for it, it becomes yours and yours forever. I speak freely about it because I did it myself. Yeah. I, 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 I speak freely when you ask me the question, I did it myself. It tells you how hard we work towards this. So getting money easily would help, but suffer and get it. That will take you to places. So that is all that I can say. I love that. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Nelson. And how do how are you getting your children involved in what you're doing as well? My last question. Um, I have four girls, one boy. Hey. So for the girls, they are, they are not interested in what I'm doing, but I, I'm seeing the 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 guy who. Follow my footsteps. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So five amazing children. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well done. And um, uh, greetings to your wife as well and the children. And um, I will see you in Ghana very, very shortly. Um, so I can see the amazing house and do a proper video there so people can actually see that Dental was there. Um, and then, like I said, we'll go around. We'll be knocking on doors when I come back. Um, and see whether we can get any of those doors open. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. God bless Thank you. you Continue. You. Bless you Don't give up. Um, this is just the beginning. Yes. Thank you, too. Thank yeah. you, too, for inviting me to your show. Thank you so much. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the show. It's been so inspirational. Um, I'm so inspired by what Nelson is doing. And I've been encouraged that guys, you know, don't give up on that dream. Um, we can do it. And you can see that he's 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 supporting a lot of people. Um, you know, 300 people are bringing him rubbish every single day. Imagine if he had a big contract, the amount of people that will be collecting that dirt that people just drop on the on the street, that plastics. Um, and so I think that it's a great initiative. Like he said, he's got nearly all the certificates that will allow him to, to build. Um, you can go and see the prototype, um, but I think it's really, really important that we support our own. Um, if it works and it's good, then we should use it. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the show. Again, I want to say a big thank you to World Remit um, for supporting us. Thank you so much. Um, you can join over 5.7 million people um, sending money back home. Again, I must say a big thank you to Vesta London Beauty. I'm using her lip glaze. You can go online and get one as well. Um,
guys, if you are looking for investment opportunities, um, there's a platform called Odana Connect, which we are launching very, very soon. I know I keep saying very, very soon, but it's actually going to be coming out. Um, and these type of investment um, that Nelson has even put forward will be on the platform. It's our own mini LinkedIn um, for Africans and Ghanaians that are looking for investment opportunities. So make sure that you register, guys. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a place that you all want to be in um, if you're looking for job opportunities, if you're looking for investment opportunities and partnerships. Um, it's a really good platform for you to be part of. I'm sure you can hear the fireworks. Fireworks. Yes, it's going off. Um, and if you haven't already used World Remit to send money back home, I'm sending you a link right now, guys make sure that you go online and you use um, the link to send money back home. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me on the show. Make sure that you do share it with a friend, with a loved one. Download it, spread the word, do everything that you have to do. Um, but please, guys, make sure that you you, you support the course. Yes, Kotakot. Yes, on the flip side, I am a Kotakot supporter and i am part of the management our first match is coming very very soon we'll be discussing that too at some point some point we'll be talking kotoko um so guys thank you so much we have our jerseys coming out soon as well so keep watching this and uh, thank you so much for joining me on the show god bless you all take care bye bye